Good morning, White Chess. Welcome to the Weekly Buck. I'm your host, Chris Cody, and with me is my co-host, Ben Caster. How's it going, Chris? Pretty good. I wish it wasn't so cold, though. Yeah, I know. It's going to be snowing soon. That's pretty crazy to think about, actually. So, Chris, are you excited for Christmas? Yeah, I hope Santa will bring me my pony, finally. <laughs> A pony? I didn't think that was your style. Well, um, anyways, I heard you and Jack and Haley ask people uh, about the upcoming holiday season. Yeah, Hey, Tori. What's up, my guy? Um, how do you feel about Christmas? I love Christmas. Why? Because um, I like food and I like snow, and Christmas has both of those. You're very right, but doesn't every other day of the winter season have food and snow? Yeah, but Christmas is special. It's like special food and, and special snow. Okay. That's what I was looking for. Well, you look like you got on some very special earrings. What are those? Um, they're They're babies. Uh, they're what? They're, they're, they're little black babies. <laughs> From your earrings? Yes, sir. Is that like a new trend? Yeah, I'm starting it right now. What, what are you going to call it? What's the trend called? Baby ear. <laughs> Did you get those at Hot Topic? No, actually, um. Spencer's Gifts? No. Um, Sophie DiLorenzo, you know her? Yeah. Her sister made these. She made them? She made them. Special. They're, they were special for me. Sophie's sister work at Hot Topic or Spencer's? Probably, actually. We can end this interview right now. I called it. Do you prefer Thanksgiving or Christmas? Either one. I get to eat during Thanksgiving and get to eat during Christmas. That's true. But don't... And I go over to my grandma's. Grandmas, Graham Grams. What do you? What's your grandma's nickname? Grandma. Oh God. Okay. Do you like Santa Claus? Yeah. Do you believe in Santa Claus? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you have a pretty fond and uh, warm view of Santa Claus, you'd say, right? Of course. Uh, yeah, it gives you presents and all that stuff brings you joy. Yep. He has about a billion elves locked down in his workshop making toys. Does that change your view on Santa? Yeah. Do you like him more or less now? The same. The same. So it doesn't change your view at all? No. Sheesh, I never thought about Santa that way. Yeah, it really makes you think. Man, all this Christmas talk is making me hungry. Speaking of, have you gone to the new Taco Bell yet? Yeah, it was really good, but the line was like wicked long. Nice. I heard Carson and Nick did a review for the new chain. Let's check it out. Yes, sir. Taco Bell was recently built on the Oswego's east side. With premium location, it is a place where Ponderosa used to be. This adds to the wide variety of fast food on the Oswego's east side. Nicole and I figured we should test out the menu at the newest fast food place in Oswego. We got some good grub, so let's go check it out. So the first thing we're going to review is the Baja Blast from Taco Bell. I would give it a 7.8. Definitely a 10 out of 10. I think it's very tasty, but I have had better sugar. This is the one for me. This will be So the first food item we're going to review is the cinnamon twist. I'd rate these of 5.1. 4.3. You can definitely taste the oil. And it's like, I don't know, it's just so flavorless, even with the cinnamon. Yeah, but they're like a good little stuff. Like, never needed something quick, quick bite. I'm gonna talk about it, get some cinnamon to this. I don't know, I just feel like, after a while, Hey, Chief. Next thing we're gonna try our the case of the melts. I would rate this 
probably at a 6.3. Reasoning because it is very good. And it's a lot more tasty than I expected. But it's very flimsy. And I feel like if it wasn't in the wrapper, it'd spill very easily. And I, I just don't like messes. You seem to really like it. <laughs> well, I was skeptic at first. I mean, the bread does sog very easily. Mine was soggy to begin with. I'd probably get a 5.7. I mean, I'd have to actually be in the mood for something like this, because it also has, what, chicken in it? Yeah. And, like, some spicy stuff. Uh, Next thing we're going to try is the beefy Frito Burrito. I already get a few points just because it runs. like they just threw everything in the bowl and a lot of the chips aren't even touched with stuff so I, I don't know it doesn't feel like there's that much stuff on them I was going to say you took one chip and that literally took yeah, all the of it one, off. the one chip took everything off I don't even know what's on it is it taco sauce beans and cheese it looks like nacho cheese beans and something but I don't know, what it is. I don't know. It's decent, but not the greatest thing in the world. And I doubt it will agree with anybody's stuff. So, let's send you back to the desk. Ooh, that really makes me want a black bean crunch up supreme. That sounds so good right now. Just like my blocks. <laughs> Dude, you, you don't even leave the bench. Mary and Eric, Cole, and Nicole put together some information on sectionals for my team. Should we check it out? Yeah, let's do it. 
The boys volleyball team is looking to win their seventh sectionals title. We were able to ask Chris Cody on how the team will do, and he said, if we play like a team, no one can beat us. Good luck to the boys volleyball team in sectionals. This is Eric Carson signing off. Well, good luck on the rest of the season. That's great you made the sectional finals. Yeah, I'm really proud of our team this year. Do you know if any other teams made the sectionals? Um, yeah, I heard the cheerleading team won the sectional title. Oh, that's awesome. Joe and Ethan have some more information about the team. Let's go check it out. On October 26th, the Oswego competitive cheerleading team traveled to West Genesee in efforts to become Section 3 champions. Let's take a look at a few clips from that. As you saw, Oswego won and became sectional champions, while Fulton's routine wasn't nearly as coordinated or well performed as Oswego's, they still got second. The girls did a great job and showed the utmost respect after the win. Their next season doesn't start until November 18th, but congratulations to them for this season and have a great day, Bucks. It's crazy to think it's almost time for winter sports. This year is flying by. Yeah, quarter one is about to an end, and I've just been really busy playing Pokemon. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's pretty addictive, actually, and they're coming out with a new game, too. Oh, yeah. I heard Adam and Riley did a review on the new game. Let's send it over to them. Mm, um, welcome to our, um, um, our gaming segment once again. That, that is on um, due this week. Um, I am your, um, one of your hosts, um, Adam, and, the, uh, and my other host is... Riley! And Welcome to the gaming corner. Yeah, and since we're about to bring you uh, more, uh, talk about more games that are uh, coming up really soon, since um, we're about to hit November, which is going to be the, um, the goal. some goal for new games coming around for um, Switch and other consoles. And the main game we're going to be focusing on today is Pokemon Sword and Shield. The newest games in the mainline Pokemon series. Coming out November 15th and onto the Nintendo Switch for $60. Mm. Yeah, Pokemon Sword and Shield has gotten like a lot of like leads, discussion lately, about and especially about the whole national decks or deals, which spiral a lot of out of hand, you know. Decks. Mm. And so like like all of the other Pokemon games, there are hundreds of Pokemon to try and collect. Like hundreds, like I think there's almost 1,000 Pokemon right now, but because it's a new console and 
half of and some of the budget went to another side game that Game Freak, the developers of the game, put money into. They weren't working on full funds. But I'm still excited for this game. I don't mind that not all of the Pokemon are going to be there. I know one of my main Pokemon is going to be there from seeing it in the actual gameplay trailers. So that's, that's good. Mm -hmm. Also about um, Shoulder, Sword and Shield, there, there'll be some version of exclusive Pokemon, like um, one, like I think Shield will have like, um, a, I think Galari and Pony. Alright, so with the legendary Pokemon of Sword and Shield, it's Zacian and Zamas Enter. Zacian is, like they're both like these wolves, basically. One wolf sword. Another wolf it has just a giant colossal shield on its face. And they match with colors. Zacian is like cyan, and then Zamazenta is like magenta, which matches their colors. Zacian is blue, and then Z Zamazenta is the, like this red color. So it sort of matches with that except. And was I going to talk about it again? It was... Alright, more about just the characters that you with and the Pokemon. The three starters for this region is Scorbunny, Sobble, Root. Scorbunny is this little fire-type rabbit. Super cute. It matches the whole soccer aesthetic. As you know, okay, Europe in general, gold. And then, Sobble is like this little water lizard. He's, he's shy. He, he is our precious little lizard boy. Then Grookey is this little grass monkey. He's got a tiny drum that he likes to play. It's adorable. There, um, I guess until next time. I've been Riley. And I've been Adam. And see ya next time you visit the game club. Well, I'm definitely getting that. <laughs> it's addictive. Trust me. Once I got that Pikachu, like I was like at static. <laughs> All right, bud. <laughs> you know what else is exciting? No Shave November. Oh yeah, I heard Billy, Luke, and Jack can shed some light on No Shave November. Why do we mention it twice? Hello, this is Lucas Katie, and I'm here to enlighten you about No Shave November. No Shave November is a challenge among men to not shave their bodies throughout the whole month of November. Let's well, see, October 31st, free. December 1st, free. But November 1st to November 30th, strictly no shaving. This is a challenge taken on by men worldwide. It's, it's making an appearance in every country. No Shave November, or as they call it, Movember, was actually started in 1999 by a group of young men in Adelaide, South Australia. It was on the news, and from there on out, it was a growing fad. The goal of No Shave November is to grow awareness by embracing our hair and letting it grow wild and free. This is because many cancer patients cannot grow hair. As you can see, one of our fellow students has started to participate in this month. No Shave November can be commonly misconceived as December, basically the same thing, but diff two different months. Overall, No Shave November is just a great month to raise awareness. Yeah, it's cool that people don't mind not shaving to raise money for a great cause. Well, that's all we have for this week's show. Thanks for watching this edition of the Weekly Buck. Have a great day, OHS.